أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين وصل اللهم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين Amongst the greatest crises that the Muslim community in the West has to face is combating the problem of Islamophobia. Today we see that millions of people have this irrational fear and that's how the term phobia is defined the irrational fear of the religion of Islam and Muslims. When we take a look and we present the world, the word Islam, or we present the word Quran, or we present the word Sharia, or we present the word Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we see that oftentimes an image has been created in the minds of a large number of people that is formed with a negative connotation. We as Muslims in the West, have responsibility to repair this image of the religion of Islam. Before we get there, we have to understand exactly what are the causes of this type of racism and this type of phobia in the communities that oftentimes we find ourselves living in. Number one, we have to understand that the problem of racism is something that is racially constructed, meaning, or, or socially constructed, meaning what? That in the religion of Islam, in the practice of true humanity and true morality that no one segregates themselves or names others on the basis of where they are coming from, what language they speak, or the color of their skin, and certainly not what practice that they are faithful toward. Let me give you an example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the whole Quran, He states, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ That surely we have honored the sons of Adam. Every single human being comes from the progeny of Adam and Eve. Thus, every single human being is honored in their own way. And thus, we as human beings need to honor one another on the basis of humanity, on the basis of morality, on the basis that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has offered, up, offered us all the blessing of being human beings with great potential to move closer toward Him and at the same time progressing humanity, progressing society, and progressing community. But nonetheless, we see that colonization, oppression, wealth, power have all been driving forces in creating, conquering, and dividing. We see that, for instance, as recent as the times of colonialism 50, 100 years ago, that race was a major sector, major dimension that allowed for colonization to take place. That, as the famous poet Rupyard Kipling, he states in his famous in that famous text, "White Man's Burden," they state that the Europeans had a responsibility to civilize the uncivilized, meaning that every individual who was not of a white construct coming from Europe, that they themselves were uncivilized people. We see that this particular trend, though slavery has been has become abolished in the majority of the world, and this problem of racism has openly been declared by the political elite and by you know nations across the world today that something like racism or segregation is outlawed in many of these nations. What we find is that though the practice outwardly has been abolished, this practice or this idea or this concept or this belief inwards is present in the hearts and in the minds and in the souls of many different types of people. We as followers of the religion of Islam of the Holy Prophet are now encountering this trial and tribulation and this particular obstacle living in the West. Due to the minority group of Muslims, the far minority Muslims, if we consider them to be Muslims in the first place, we see that they have been a means to speak for the entirety of the religion of Islam. And thus, this phobia, this irrational fear of Muslims and the religion of Islam has been created in the hearts and in the minds of many people. But at, though, this is, though this is an irrational fear, we as Muslims also have responsibilities to reconcile and to cure this disease that is in the hearts and in the minds of people. We take a look at three very important steps. And just to put this in perspective, this particular phobia, according to a report, a survey that was taken um, in the USA Today magazine in February 11th, the year 2015, it states that 27% of Americans believe that ISIS and these other groups of 
uh, treachery and of vice and of terrorism and of violence speak for true Islam and true Muslims. 27%. When you see a number as large and as staggering and as dominant as that, and this was one year ago, imagine what the numbers of the polls are today in light of certain political candidates speaking and bashing the religion of Islam and the Muslim community. Imagine what the number is. What are we doing in order to decrease that number what are we doing in order to improve our image as a Muslim community living in the West? We take a look and we see that we can do a number of things. Number one, we have to take advice from the Holy Quran, from the teachings of the Holy Prophet wasallam, and we have to make our very best effort to change the narrative. Changing the narrative means exactly what? We come and we see that we have to understand that every single Muslim man, every single Muslim woman, every senior citizen, and every child has to be an ambassador of the religion of Islam. To put this in perspective, Imam al-Sadiq he tells his companion Mufaddal, Mufaddal ibn Umar, this um, great honorable companion of the Imam salam, the Imam tells him, Ya Mufaddal, inna al-qabih min kulla ahadin qabih wa min aqbah that whenever someone performs a bad deed, whenever someone performs something not appropriate, people just consider it something not appropriate and a bad deed. But But when you perform a bad deed, when you perform something inappropriate, it's even more inappropriate and it's a worse deed because of your relationship with me. He's telling him basically, O Mufaddal that you are an ambassador of me. You are my representative. Thus make sure every single action that you do, it's a reflection of my actions. And then the Imam Ali Salam, he continues, Ya Mufaddal, inna al-hasan min kulli ahadin hasan wa minka ahsan bimakanatika minna. And O oh, Mufaddal, that a good deed is a good deed from anyone. But when you perform a good deed, it's an even greater deed because of your relationship with me meaning O Mufaddal, that be an ambassador for me. When someone sees you performing a good deed, they state that that is because he is a Shia of Imam Jafar al-Sadiq And when someone sees a bad deed, they state, look, he is a Shia of Imam Jafar al-Sadiq So what are you doing to represent the Imam We need to become amongst those who shift the narrative by performing more positive than negative, by doing more good than bad, by being a reflection of the reflection of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is the Holy Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam when Allah tells them وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ that we do not send you O Muhammad except to be a mercy to mankind and we see that the religion of Islam and Muslims have often been advised to make sure that they be careful of their actions be careful of their words be smart in the way that we speak which is why the second most important step that we can do in order to change this narrative or in order to change the structure or this phobia that people have in their hearts and in, the, in, the, in, and in their minds, specifically in the West toward us as Muslims and the religion of Islam, is to use good language. We see that oftentimes when an individual has his back against the wall, he responds with anger, he responds with aggression. This is not the custom that has been prescribed toward us by the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for instance, states in the Holy Quran, Bring people to the way of your Lord. Number one, be wise. When you're bringing people to the way of your Lord, when you're bringing people toward the religion of Islam, when you're allowing them the opportunity to learn and be exposed about the religion of Islam, about the legacy of the Prophet and his family, we have to make sure that we do it wisely. Be smart. Know when to speak, know how to speak, understand your circumstances before going out. Don't always be aggressive, but don't always be passive at the same time as well. Find a balance, understand where you're dealing with, who you're dealing with, when to speak, how to speak, in which gathering you're speaking at. Number one. Number two, ud'u ila sabila rabbika bil hikmah, be wise. Wal mawidatil hasana. And in doing so, when you're bringing people to um, remove this phobia that they have about the religion of Islam, Use beautiful words, give good examples, be polite. When someone responds to you with anger, respond to, respond to them with politeness. As the famous story goes, when that man, he comes to Imam al-Hasan, he leaves Syria to come all the way toward 
Medina. He knocks the door of Imam al Hassan. He opens the door. He tells him, Are you the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib? He says, I'm the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. At this moment, the man he curses at him. He begins to scream at him. He curses Amir al Mu'mineen. He curses Sayyid al Zahra. He speaks ill about the Holy Prophet. Imam al Hassan smiles at him. He responds toward him by asking, Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? How can I help you? When you act like this with someone who's antagonizing you, who's being aggressive with you, we see that their entire perspective has completely changed and shifted. That they will state, wait a minute, is this what the religion of Islam is about? In order to combat Islamophobia, we need to be smart and we need to use good language. And number three, and extremely important in light of what we're dealing with today, we need to speak on commonalities before we speak on differences. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala, in chapter 3 verse 64 قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْ إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٌ إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ That, O oh, people of the book, O oh, Jewish community, O oh, Christian community, تَعَالَوْ إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ Let us speak on that which we have similarities. And let's not speak about those differences that we have. The fact that we all believe in God, the fact that we all believe in morality, the fact that we all believe in justice, the fact that we all believe in mercy. These are all common values and themes that every one of us have today. We need to make sure that we are of those who follow these three very important steps. And fourthly, and perhaps most importantly, is to expose them toward the true essence of the religion of Islam. Expose them to values that are Islamic and not values that are being practiced by the so-called Islamic State, for instance. We see that in the religion of Islam, we take a look at the example of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Imam Ali alayhi salam in the famous narration states, if someone harms a believer in the Bible, then he harms me. Amir al-Mu'mineen offering advice to all of us to respect the Christian brethren. No wrong, nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's extremely encouraged. In the religion of Islam, for instance, it is uh, not appropriate for a butcher to sacrifice or to you know, perform the dhabiha of an animal in front of his family members. You shouldn't sacrifice the sheep in front of his other family from amongst the sheep. You shouldn't do that because it's immoral. Take a look at the mercy of the religion of Islam. Let me conclude with this last point. In order to demonstrate to all of you, and perhaps we can share this knowledge with others, about the mercy of the religion of Islam and the values taught to us by the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We come forth and we see that a hadith tells us that we should make sure that we clean the noses of our sheep, meaning even our herd, that we have to respect. Imam al-Sadiq Alayhi Salatu Wasallam in a narration, he states that there are six rights that the animals have over us. If the, that if the Imams of Ahlul Bayt speak about the rights of the animal, then you know, over the human being, then imagine what the rights of the human being are over the human being. Imagine what the right are of the atheist. Imagine what the right is over uh, of the agnostic. That everyone deserves respect in the religion of Islam, no matter who you are. Unlike what is often being practiced. We take a look at these six rights, or at these five rights. Number one, the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam states, do not use the back of the animal as a place to sit and talk. Meaning, don't ride the animal as a place to converse. Use it as a means to take you from point A to point B. Number two, when you take a break. Of course, today we don't use animals to transport ourselves. We drive, but at the same uh, token, we need to understand these moral and ethical lessons of the Imam. Number two, the Imam والسلام, states that when you take a break, for instance, from riding upon your animal, offer drinks and food to your animal before you take it yourself. The mercy of the religion of Islam. Number three, do not place a mark on the face of the animal. Oftentimes in the olden days, we used to place a mark in order to demonstrate that this animal is mine, this animal is yours. Number four, do not strike it on the face. Yet what do they do to human beings? What do they do to moral individuals who just may not be followers of the religion of Islam? Or even we come forth and we take a look at these individuals. What do they do to the followers of Ahlul Bayt? They burn them, they butcher them, they behead them. Over here we see that the Imam Sadiq says, do not even strike your animals on the face. Number five, let the animal drink water every time you cross a body of water. Every time you cross a body of water, offer it to your animal. Yet we take a look and we see the number of people starving in the Muslim world today, the number of people who are being oppressed. What we have to do is demonstrate toward 
non-Muslims specifically living in the West, we as Muslims living in the West, we have to make sure that we expose them to the true teachings of the religion of Islam. We have to become amongst those who use modern technologies, for instance, distributing water bottles with the hadith of the Holy Prophet speaking about mercy, speaking about justice, speaking about the treatment of mothers, speaking about uh, the rights of women in the religion of Islam, for instance. All of these have a small effect in terms of shifting the narrative about people. When we, as a Muslim, for instance, living in this country, we hold the door open. We say please and thank you to those around us. These all have the opportunity to so-called shift the narrative, to change people's perspective about Muslims. When you are at the workplace, when you are at school, you don't have to speak about religion and try to preach toward your friends and to your, toward your colleagues about the religion of Islam. But by means of your actions, you have the opportunity to bring people toward respecting you as a Muslim and at the same time respecting the religion of Islam. The hadith that states from Imam al-Sadiq very important, he states, Kunu lana samitin, al Then bring people toward us quietly or without using your tongues. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will be able to become amongst those who are the ambassadors of the religion of Islam. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will have this tawfiq, this divine help for us to change the narrative in regards to what people think about the religion of Islam, to what they think about the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and remove this negative, irrational fear that they have about our most beautiful religion and about our personalities, specifically the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين